Well, we've been busy here in the shop. Finally getting around to doing some of the work I promised my wife I would do. And you know that's important work. I'm building a couple of doors, just closet doors, and I need a panel for the doors. There'll be a frame and a panel to fit in it, and the panels are, are like this, just pine panels, and you can see I've glued them up of a number of boards to get the width I need. Now, what's not immediately obvious is the panels I need will only be a little more than a quarter of an inch thick. So I went from three-quarter inch wood, like this board, to pieces a little over a quarter of an inch thick, which I glued together to make the panel. Now, how do you get from one to the other? Well, I guess there's a couple of ways you could do it. If you were really, really ambitious, you could take your trusty plane start planing this board down from three quarters of an inch to a quarter of an inch. That's way too much work. Besides which, you paid for this wood. You don't want it all to turn into these shavings. No, we're going to resaw this board. We're going to take a board and cut it in its thickness. Previously, you know, we talked about hand saws, we talked about cross-cutting and, and ripping a board to width when you need a narrow board out of a wider board. We used to you know, we clamp the board onto the bench and use a trusty rip saw and rip it like so. Well, this is another use for the rip saw, but we're going to cut across the board and cut it into two thin panels. That sounds like a lot of work, and it is some work, but it's not impossible to do. Now, what we need to do first is mark it out. Now, I've taken our trusty little marking gauge, set it for just over a quarter of an inch, and we're going to mark the panels. We'll mark it from both sides. Same way we do just push it away so that little marking spur scores the wood, run it down the sides, I usually mark from both sides, just give me an idea of where my saw is going to be. But now I'm going to darken it with a pencil so you can see a little more clearly what's going on. So now you can see what we've got to do. We've got to split this board. These pieces are what we need. We'll saw right down the middle. Now to do this, it's really helpful if you have a vise on your bench. Vices come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Mine's pretty primitive, but it does the trick. So clamp it up. Get your weapon of choice. And now we're going to do the fun part. We're going to rip this board in its thickness. Okay. The way I work, quite Commonly, I actually work off the end of my bench with the vise on the opposite side. And this works out well. You can kind of look over my shoulder and see what we're doing. Start the saw on the far side of the board, not on this corner. Don't start like this because that's hard to control. Start on the far side, put your thumb on the board. Saw again, so keep your thumb high enough so you don't get caught in the teeth and just nibble down between those lines and as soon as the saw starts to cut over there start backing it up towards this side
once you get a good start like that, ignore the opposite side. Don't try to cut down. Don't do this. Don't try to saw all the way down parallel. To saw parallel to the end of the board. Just start it and then keeping the saw in the cut. Once you've gotten down like this, what I normally do is I just flip the board around. Then I start right in the cut. And I ignore this side and I cut down the lines that I can see. Once you're down both sides a bit, then you can run the saw parallel to the end. And then you just keep the process going. Whip a little farther down one side, flip the board, whip a little farther down the other side, rip it down the middle. Before you know it, you'll have a stack of boards like these ones, where you can see the, the marks on the whip saw. And they can be glued up to make panels or whatever else you need. All thanks to the trusty whipsaw. So, happy sign, folks. <laughs>